do 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 Hello. I'm Anya and I'm going to be talking about cow arts and how I managed to get accepted first time round. This is a school I've been wanting to go to for over five years and finally this year I was old enough to apply and I got accepted. Cal Arts is a school situated near Los Angeles and was founded in the 1960s by Walt Disney and his brother Roy. It's most well known for its character animation program, which is what I applied to and got accepted into, but there's also a wide variety of things within dance, theatre, film, photography, fine arts, music, all that kind of thing. It's a really cool place where there seems to always be so much collaboration within the arts. I love it. The character animation program is considered one of the best of its kind and is certainly, I'd say, one of the most famous. It has alumni such as Tim Burton, John Lasseter, the creator of Pixar, Alex Hirsch, the creator of Gravity Falls, JG Quintel, Regular Show, Penn Ward, Adventure Time, Darren Nefsey, Starburst, The Forces of Evil, Brad Bird, Pete Doctor, Andrew Stanton, Stephen Hillenberg, creator of SpongeBob, all kinds of really cool people have gone to CalArts and I know that a huge amount of people want to follow in their footsteps just like I did and now I'm getting to do that. The video is going to be laid out like this. First I'm going to briefly overview the different aspects of the application process, then I'm going to go through my pieces for the online portfolio, then I'll be going over a few tips and tricks for the sketchbook portion and finally you'll see my demo reel and I don't know what else I'm going to put in this video. If you're looking for a video that discusses applying to art schools in general then I'm afraid I'm not going to be very helpful because I will only be talking about CalArts mainly because it's the only school I applied to and that's because I actually wanted to take a gap year if you want really specific information on the CalArts application process, the best source of information is their website. I'm going to link it down below and I might even link specific pages so that I can help with that because I am not going to be even touching on things like financial aid or international slash domestic applicants and that kind of thing. Okay, now on to the first part of the video. Oh, just to clarify, I am not a professional. This is by no means the correct or proper way to do things. This is just how I did it and what I personally believe helped me get a spot at CalArts. Okay, the application process for character animation includes an online portfolio, which is submitted through the website Slide Room, and that includes a little video introduction and an optional demo reel, a mailed in sketchbook, that can be more than one, I submitted two. An artist statement, which discusses your artistic intentions, what inspires you and why you want to come to CalArts. At least two letters of recommendation, school transcripts and financial aid information if applicable. That's FAFSA, for example. All of this information, once again, is going to be in detail on the website, which is linked below. On to my portfolio pieces. I'm gonna scooch my booch over here so that I can address my art. Au voila. Right. So, the online portfolio is possibly one of the most important parts of the application process. This is because it's one of the first things they'll see, which means that the order in which you post things is super duper important. What needs to go first is your video introduction, which makes sense. And this, by the way, is a short video between, I think, a minute and a minute and a half of you just saying hi, maybe listing a few of your hobbies and why you want to come to the school. With mine, I headed outside, put on my farmer gear, really upped the British accent. Although you don't need to do this, you can film in your car, in your house, in your bedroom doesn't matter, but I just thought that that would be a nice touch, especially because you're not allowed to edit your video in any way. You, immediately after the introduction comes my demo reel, and I think it's a really good way to start a portfolio because it picks up the energy and highlights in very short bursts what kind of things you are creating and imagining. 
The way I structured my portfolio after the video introduction and the demo reel is my life drawings, my observational work, which is slightly different because it's less nude women, more animals and landscapes, then creative work, uh, which I did as full pieces, then character studies, and then finally storyboards. I believe it's really important to show your technical skills before you show what you can do with those. And plus, I've already shown my demo reel which highlights the personality side of the portfolio. So, I'm gonna go through the first part quite quickly because I don't know how YouTube works. I don't wanna get flagged for my charcoal titties. So, this is my first still piece. It's actually a page from my sketchbook, which I wouldn't recommend doing too much, but I put all my best pieces from each section first, and this is by far one of my favorite pieces I've ever done of life drawing. I think it demonstrates that I can consistently draw the same figure from different angles and in different poses, and the painted one shows that I understand shading and color. And then next is just a woman sitting. I drew this years ago in my class. I was probably 16, 15, and that's from school. Then the next one is a more detailed rendered piece. I only included uh, this one because for animation, it's not that important to show that you can do hyper-realistic things because at the end of the day, animation is a lot of frames drawn in a short space of time so you just don't have the luxury of adding this much detail but it's nice to show that you can do this anyway my next piece is from summer school i went to CESA, which is actually at the cow arts campus and it was one of the best months of my life anyway no gushing allowed it this is a piece where we had to combine the model with an animal and I chose a raven and I think she looks pretty cool. It's about 20% raven, 80% model. Then after this is quite a harsh light study of one of my teachers from the summer school. I think it's quite accurate to him and it also uses one of his favorite materials which is these really broad paint pens. I don't remember what brand they were or anything but they were so fun to play with. Then I have this, which is a good demonstration of foreshortening and also pushing proportions because in reality, her foot is not going to be that massive compared to her head, but it really emphasizes the pose. And then I have this piece, which I think is nice because it shows the womanly curves and I don't know, just threw that in there. Then I have these men. They're also from my sketchbook, but I thought it was nice to include in my portfolio because they are quite dynamic poses and I think there's a good sense of weight and form within those few lines. After that, I have another summer school piece, which again highlights the stretched perspective and really extreme angles. I think it's quite fun and also has, has a bit of character with the gun and the costume. Then this piece has two characters interacting. I think that's really important because usually when you have a story, you have multiple things interacting with each other. Otherwise, it's a bit of a boring story. And I think it's important to demonstrate I can draw that. And then this was just some digital sketches in a bit of a funkier style, more polygonal, just to show I have variety. This is just a really quick sketch. Uh, this one is just some colorful, I don't know, funky pose, it's really old. This one's to show I can use watercolor and gouache. Then this one and this one are just simple sketches, again, showing I can understand poses and form. And then finally, this one is when I was waiting in line for a burger or something, and all the characters looked interesting, and I decided to draw them. Shows I can draw straight into pen and that I can, well at least I can try to capture a character within those lines. Okay, then the next piece is observational work but not traditional life drawing. Here we have a dance study. I included two of these in my sketchbook but I thought just in case my portfolio isn't good enough to even get my sketchbook looked at, I'd include some dance studies in the portfolio too. 
Then I have some hands and feet. Hands and feet are important because you need to prove that you can draw them even though normally you wouldn't have time, just so that you can understand how they move and things. Then I included some geese. I seem to really like geese. They're in my actual sketchbook as well, but it is just to show I can draw animals as well as humans. This piece, despite being the oldest in the portfolio, is one of my favorite. And it's because it's an observation of my kitchen and a lighting study. And I think it turned out quite well, especially because I was, what, 15 when I did it? Something around that. Then with this piece, it's also a study and it's also digital, but I used a little bit more creative license and I simplified shapes and added some things that I wanted, for example, the tower in the distance, because that's relevant to a story of mine. This piece is another one I'm proud of, and it's because it's one of the only full-scale illustrations that I've done. And it was actually part of my CESA application last year, although I think it translates well into the portfolio because it tells the story, which by the way is of my ancestry. My aunt got really into studying my family history in the last few years, and boy did she discover some people. And I decided to draw these people whilst imagining what would it be like if I revived all my ancestors and invited them to one giant dinner party? I can't imagine it would have gone too well. This piece was also for my CESA application and that's actually me sitting in this bed and the prompt was to explain some of our interests, our hobbies, who we are essentially. Moving on, we have a character design page and I think this one was useful because you can design any characters. Although these ones are specific to me because they represent my three nationalities and then me on the end, although it looks nothing like me, but whatever. So I have Russian, British and American nationality. And that's really helpful because if I'm ever at an event where I don't know which team to support, all I do is wear red, white and blue and bam, supporting all three and France and a bunch of other countries, but it's fine. These houses I included because I wanted to show that I can design inanimate objects as well. And the bottom half shows that I also have a good understanding of lighting. Then these three are from last summer. I just threw them in to show I can do different styles, also some more character design things, whatever. With this piece, I tried to include some more story-esque images, so you know, I'm walking through the woods, ooh, it's mysterious lighting. And I included two versions just to have two different atmospheres. This piece I did on a plane ride back from Japan. I did some facial expression studies of one of my characters, Janie. It's really rough, but I don't think you need to have perfection in your whole portfolio because that's not what they look for. They look for the raw skill and the creativity that lies within what you draw. Not, oh, how well can you draw this line? Ah. And finally, we have my two storyboards. You can pause the video and look at them if you want. They're not that interesting. Although the last one is for the opening sequence to the TV show I'd like to make someday. I have partially animated it. It's on a couple of videos already on my YouTube and there's snippets of it in my demo reel, which I'll show at the end. Okay, done. So to recap, I put video introduction, demo reel, life drawing, observation, creative, storyboard. And within those pieces, you put your best first and then progressively gets worse. That's just how I structured it. Others suggest different things. For example, if you're applying to a specific job within the industry, your portfolio will end up looking very different and will be stretched in a different way. Now I'm going to be talking about the sketchbook portion of the application. There are certain skills that you need to demonstrate in this sketchbook. These include strong sense of anatomy and proportion, a good sense of energy and movement within your drawings, knowledge of perspective, knowledge of shadow, tone, lighting, etc. The ability to draw solid objects that work in a three-dimensional space, a good grasp of various mediums, good storytelling, 
And despite my sketchbook being very colourful, colour is actually not that important. You can do an entirely black and white sketchbook and still be accepted. These skills are going to be shown through a variety of subject matter, and those include figure drawing, people sketches, so if you sit in a cafe and you draw the people around you whilst they're moving, animal studies, skeletal studies, sequential images, so this can be a comic strip or a storyboard or just two images together that tell a story, landscape studies, and that needs at least one or two that show you understand perspective. Character designs, landscape designs, maybe prop designs, some finished illustrations are always nice because they show you can compose an image as well, and various pieces that evoke certain energies or emotions. Once you have these skills and this subject matter included, you have a good foundation. But at the end of the day, there are over a thousand people applying to this course and between only 40 and 60 people get accepted. So what you need is additional stuff to make you stand out of the crowd. And this is what I recommend. This is something I think has never been discussed out loud, but in every single accepted sketchbook I've seen, the following points are what makes it that much better than those that were waitlisted or rejected, even if the skills were the same level. The people looking through your sketchbook want to get to know you. Help them by letting yourself shine through in your work. By the end of them looking from cover to cover, they should have a good grasp of who you are as a person, your interests, your hobbies, culture, lifestyle, siblings, environment, everything to do with you and your life. Okay, you don't need to include like your deepest, darkest feelings and secrets, but just something that makes you a real human in their eyes. Because up to this point, they've seen that one video introduction and that's most likely it. With me, I had a heavy focus on my life in the English countryside. For example, all the animals I drew can be found right near me in my garden and the vegetation is the same, the people, I had farmers, I drew myself and my fashion, I drew old people in a cafe, because that is what I'm experiencing. And then on top of that, I, in the start of my pink sketchbook, went to Japan. So that was quite a nice contrast to show things that weren't part of my culture, but the way I worked around that was slightly different. I added different notes to be like, oh, this is cool, this isn't what I'm used to. On that note, add writing in your sketchbook. I haven't seen much of that, but I think it's something really useful to the people looking at your work because even though pictures can be worth a thousand words, it's often useful to add captions and notations just to emphasize what you've drawn. Sometimes that can be expressing something that happened in a moment or how you felt about a person or what they were doing that you weren't able to capture in the image itself. Don't worry about being messy. I think one of the biggest issues that people have with sketchbooks is they can be beautiful masterpieces, but they're all finished pieces. So the point of the sketchbook is to show the inner workings of your brain, how you approach certain tasks and where your ideas come from. But if all they see is the finished product, then the whole sketchbook is pointless. And I know that I've had comments in my video saying, oh, it's so finished pieces, it's all so clean. Which <laughs> I know it's not an insult, like I'm flattered. But all I've done is I'm drawing straight into pen with bold lines and then I block colour things in so it looks finished but the more you look at it you realise it's a sketch, there's no beautiful lines, it's just quickly done. But from a distance it does look like one uniform piece on a page. Be willing to experiment, try loads of different things. If it doesn't work, don't cover it up, maybe make a note. Or what I found is super useful and I've seen in a lot of CalArts sketchbooks, so I was inspired by them, is post-it notes. They are your savior. Put post-it notes all over the place because that way you can cover your mistakes, you can fix it, but 
obviously you can flip underneath to see what the original drawing was, which shows that, yes, I went wrong, but I'm not ashamed of it. I'm just going to cover it to show you that I can do better. In general, just avoid crossing things out because it implies that you're unhappy with something. But the whole point of drawing constantly, especially in these sketchbooks, is to have this constant self-improvement. And finally, I think this is one of the most important things I've discovered. And I think one of the absolute deciding factors in sketchbooks is to show that you can turn an observational piece of work into something creative. For example, in my sketchbook, I did some observational work of trees. And then I turned those trees into characters and then I put those characters into a story. And what this does is it shows that you can take real world things and make them into something new because essentially that is what you're going to be doing within the animation industry is taking your knowledge and experiences of real life and turning it into something brand new. To demonstrate this development, I recommend starting with observational sketches, then more observational sketches, but with simplified shapes, then use those simplified shapes, but really push the proportions, experiment with how far you can stretch and squish things, then redraw the best ones and place them in a story setting. So with those little extras in the sketchbook and the skills and the subject matter, you should be well on your way to a successful application to CalArts. One other thing though is that if you follow my advice and you do everything you possibly can and you're proud of your work and you get rejected, please don't be disheartened. I think the worst thing that can happen is that someone's rejected and they think that it places a value on them as a person. Do not let one rejection determine who you are and your worth. No matter what, your artwork that you've created is important and worth something. And be proud of what you've achieved. I know I'm going all preachy here, but it's really important. I think what rejection is meant to do is really kick you up the butt and encourage you to work even harder and to push yourself and to motivate you to achieve even more. I think what you need to do is take it in your stride and be ready to move on and try again. In so many industries, including animation, failure is just an everyday thing. Even the best artists are constantly being rejected. I mean, J.K. Rowling was rejected by a bunch of publishers before they were like, oh, Harry Potter's cool. So don't let it determine your self-worth. Anyway, PSA over, back to regularly scheduled programming. The last piece of my video is the demo reel. Enjoy.
that's the end of the video. I hope this has helped at least a little bit and don't forget if you have any questions leave a comment down below although please check that no one else has already asked this question. I haven't got much else to say except subscribe and click the notification bell down below. I don't upload that often but when I do hopefully you enjoy it and spread the word. Also, maybe follow my Instagram at anya.arts or mepity. They're both art accounts. This one's a little bit more carefree. This one's a little bit more polished stuff, whatever. Thanks for watching and I'll see you around. Bye.